Okay, so um, our topic for our group discussion, group presentation with social networks, um, we're gonna cover a couple topics today. We're gonna start off with the history, we'll go into social network types, go into the technology behind social networking, and also the future of social networking. So I'll hand it over. Did you introduce yourselves? Oh yeah, I'm Chris Shuckhart. I'm Katie Glaze. I'm Brian Miller. Name's B. Adana. Okay, we're going to talk about social networking, and we're going to start off with the history of social networking. Uh, I'm sure everybody in here uh, has used social network. If you think you've used social networking, just raise your hand. Okay, I'm gonna. That was kind of a rhetorical question. Everybody in here has. It's there's so many different aspects that people don't really consider social networking, but are. Like we're going to start off with email. Some people don't consider uh, email as social networking. But it is because you're still corresponding with other people, you're talking with other people, and uh, so on. Go ahead and switch it. Uh, email, it was, the concept came up in 1971 at MIT, and it was called Mailbox, and you could send messages to other people, but you could only have it on one computer. We c you couldn't send it to different computers. So uh, in 1972, Ray Tomlinson invented what the format we know as email today, and that's when it could actually, networking got bigger, and it could actually go to different computers. And this is uh, just the very first logo that uh, Ray came up with for uh, his email. Go ahead. And then I'm sure you got, remember, you got mail, the movie, and that stupid thing when you got mail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. All right, the next uh, we're going to talk about is uh, web browsers. And this has to do with social networking because web browsers, obviously, we all use them in here. And that's what makes pretty much the internet real easy to surf. And it, it opens up uh, for internet forums where people go and just talk about whatever their feelings or why their boss sucks or what have you. But this w these were first started in 1978, but they weren't really implemented or used because the internet was kind of on its first leg, so there wasn't a big need for them. But uh, they, like I said, they bring the information to the user. So instead of having to type in lines of codes or go out and it, all you have to do is double click. Everybody in here knows, hey, let's get on the internet. Let's double click. You're right on the internet. And like I said, the software makes surfing the internet so much easier. It, without that, it would be a lot tougher to navigate. Uh, the, the first web browser uh, architecture was from Mosaic. That's what pretty much other web browsers, they looked at that and uh, took their ideas and kind of implemented into theirs. Go ahead. And then there's a very first Internet Explorer that they had. I never really used it because we're too poor and couldn't afford Internet, but uh, everybody, nobody really uses this one anymore. I just had to throw it in there for pity. But get old Netscape. All right, go ahead. Instant messaging. Uh, instant messaging. I'm sure Everybody knows what instant messaging is. You have AOL, the little da-da-da-da, and then however you say it, uh, MSN Messenger. Now even Facebook has Messenger. And uh, it was launched in the early 90s. AOL was one of the big pioneers of instant messaging. They're the uh, ones that saw how reliable and how useful it could be. So they're the ones who really started and uh, had their programmers working hard on it. And some people, I can't say this is a fact, but a lot of people that I read believe that uh, mobile messaging or texting, they got, they got that idea and wanted to implement it so bad because they saw everybody sitting there instant messaging to people. They're like, well, we can implement this on a mobile phone and make it popular and charge more money. So that's what they did, fortunately. And there's a little AOL guy, yellow AOL guy running across the screen. And this is one of the very first uh, templates I found for Instant Messenger. You can tell how it's changed from this, but it, that's one of the very first that they had that used to message on. And here's all the smiley face. I'm sure everybody had their friend on the list that always put a, some stupid smiley face and you just want to delete them, but you have all the smiley faces they love to use. And the modern social networks are big guys. MySpace, Facebook, obviously, they're kind of duking it out right now with Facebook kind of on top. Go ahead. Uh, these are so uh, big because so many people use them. They're kind of groundbreaking because before you had like, if you got a million users on a social network, it was, that was a huge thing. Now these guys have millions of users. You can customize your page like on MySpace, which kind of was their downfall. But uh, live chat on Facebook now, I'm sure you've been trying to, hey, when's this assignment due? You see your friend on Facebook, live chat. They add new features, whether it be 
Farmville, Mafia Wars, uh, chat, which Facebook did, all kinds of stuff like that. That was a big deal with <laughs> these guys. They, they add new content, and that's what keeps them fresh. And they're just a graphic. Uh, there was MySpace and Facebook duking out. Sorry about the picture. It's kind of hard to find two pale boxers fighting each other, so I just used the Rocky. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about are social networking types. I narrowed it down a little bit into different categories. Start off with business. There are business social networking sites that business professionals use all around the globe. Um, they're no longer limited, um, like he was talking about in the history of it, they're no longer limited to chat rooms or blog spots where people can come and chat online. Um, there's different categories for people based on their interests. To start out with business, there's business social networking sites. Um, an example is LinkedIn. Um, I know here on campus in the business department, I know a lot of them use this site to communicate with other business professionals around the globe or just in their main focus. Um, small businesses can use social networking sites to spread awareness about their new business and open up um, people to come in for their products and services, spread awareness about that. And also it's good for advertising too. It's a cheap way, low cost for people to advertise. Um, government has social networking sites as well. A good example of that is Second Life. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. Um, this allows government officials or even business professionals, they can join um, Second Life too. It allows them to meet in a online virtual world. They um, log in and make a character, and it's, it's like an avatar basically. They make a character of themselves and they can meet with other people in this virtual world for a meeting even without even leaving their office or their home. It's called Second Life, check it out if you haven't heard of it. Um, another thing, dating social networking sites are very popular, um, not so much with young adults, but mainly older adults or you know people that work a full-time job and can't really go out and have a social life. They're really popular, Match.com is a really familiar one that people have probably heard about. But the bad thing about that, there's a fee for their service. Um, social networking sites, they're free. Um, you know, the, the business ones, the government ones are free, but dating, there's usually a fee to fill out a questionnaire so that you can link your interests with other people on that site. And you can also search for people in location, age, gender. It's good just by doing that in comfy of your home instead of going out. Um, education social networking sites are very popular too. Classmates.com is an example of an online yearbook or a friend finder from people back in school. There's a graphic, that's what comes up when you go to the website. Um, there's also educational social networks strictly used by teachers, parents, and students where they can talk about different topics in their schoolwork or teachers can network and communicate with one another and also parents can get on and talk to other parents about their children and what they're doing in school. Um, medical social networking sites are also popular in the healthcare field. Um, they can share their information and knowledge on certain healthcare topics and also they can discover new ways to diagnose patients or come up with possible solutions to treat um, <coughs> diseases. Other ones that I came up with, there's music social networking sites such as Last.fm or Pandora where people, they need an email account, they sign in, they have a login, they pick out different bands that they like and they can communicate and chat with people or blog depending on what kind of artists or bands that they like. Um, also art, a really popular one, um, art can be um, from photos to videos to anything, but DeviantArt is a really good site. It has graphical art, um, artwork people have done by hand, it's pictures of it, really cool website. Um, for social networking, you can talk to people with the same interests and different artwork everywhere. Um, photos and videos, Flickr, just recently, within the last couple of years, it used to be just a strictly photo site where people share their photos. You know, if you like dogs, you take pictures of your dogs, and you put them on this site and you guys talk about them. But also, they just came up with videos, so now you can take your own videos and be in groups and share those as well. Um, a really funny one that I found, um, I heard about it when I was studying abroad in the summertime, is couch surfing. There's a website called Couch Surfing. I think, I don't know if it's .net or .com, but you can go online and Basically, instead of backpacking through a hostel or traveling or staying at your friend's house, you can just find a couch to stay on for that night in your location, just someone willing, has an open spot, you can do that. So I thought that was kind of cool. Okay. Now, since this is a technology class, uh, I decided to talk about the technology behind social networks. Uh, now, when we're talking about social network technology, we're talking about it from the uh, standpoint of a developer. Um, the uh, capabilities, the capabilities of a social network evolved with the internet, as he talked about. Uh, besides that, though, the uh, social networks, the trend of social networks actually pushed the frontiers of the uh, internet itself. For example, like you think about Toyota, and because of Toyota used just-in-time to fix his cars, and just-in-time is now used in 
uh, every, everywhere else. So because of the existence of social networks and the development, uh, they were able to introduce uh, new things into uh, technology. For example, like he referred to text messaging. Now your text messaging on your phone is like threaded, like you get yourself and the person that sent it to you. Basically, social networks have like pushed the frontiers of technology. Now, the reason why, um, I'm going to talk about the modern uh, social networks as far as, far as technology-wise, and they're based on this philosophy of Web 2.0. Now, if you remember how, I don't know if, if you remember the internet like in late 90s and uh, early 2000s, uh, the internet, the idea, the original idea of the internet was a resource haven, like a traditional library. You go there, the experts put the stuff there, and you as the user just go there and retrieve information. Now, uh, about 2000, uh, there, was a, like, uh, there was a bubble, there was a dot-com bubble, and because of that, um, some develops, developers came together and noticed that uh, the websites that succeeded, the websites that were the most successful, were the websites that had the most traffic. Now, they discovered that the reason why they had the most traffic was because they focused on the user rather than the application, which means that I have a website, I put in my information there, I want people to see it, but I'm more concerned about the users, or I put more emphasis on the users. So what they decided was, well, they looked at the websites that were successful, then they looked at Yahoo. Yahoo brings together people uh, of different interests. Amazon brings together people to sell stuff. So does eBay. So they decided to revamp the entire uh, internet to make it user, not just user friendly, but based on a theory that the user is the most important thing on the internet. For example, look at this class. We have a core curriculum, but we, um, Dr. Wabi, uh, uh, encourages a free flow of ideas from everybody. The idea is that when there's a free flow of ideas from all the users, we can all benefit from it, and even Dr. Wabi himself, so was the internet. And now, this was made possible because of applications like Ajax, a, uh, XML, Flash. These are web tools that allowed developers create things on the internet where the user can do stuff and it will be uploaded instantly. So because of Web 2.0, uh, the uh, modern social networks were able to uh, work. Now, I'm just basically going to talk about the uh, infrastructure and architecture of the modern social network. Now, she talked about different types of social networks. So the actual architecture, uh, the specifics of the architecture of a social network differs based on the type. But I'm, for every social network, you know, since it's online based, um, there are certain things that they need to work. Uh, you need a front end. And on the front end is the part where uh, the user interacts with. You know, you talk about Facebook, you talk about the general white and blue, you put in your whatever, you put in your you log in, your profile, everything that is concerned with that is the front end. Now, the front end is made possible by an operating system. Operating system is the software that allows the front end to work. Now, the hardware that allows the operating system to work is the web server. Now, for sites like Facebook, they use tons of servers to uh, work on the front end. Now, when you go into Facebook, I'm going to use Facebook example. Uh, when you go on Facebook and you do whatever you have to do, for example, you upload photos and put, ev uh, put everything or whatever you want to do, you expect a result, right? And um, now, between what you're doing and the result, uh, the data you put in has to be processed. And when that data is processed, it's processed through the back end. It goes into some applications. And after that, it comes to you, the user, as output. Now, between the back end and the front end, there is infrastructure. Now, because of Web 2.0, uh, the philosophy of Web 2.0 is not just allowing the user to do stuff, but the user does stuff in real time. So that infrastructure requires that the front end is connected with the back end in fractions of seconds. So that leads me to the, uh, that leads me to the next slide, which is basically the challenges that developers face, the technological challenges with the modern network. Now, the first challenge is uh, speed. Uh, basically, with uh, Web 2.0 or with uh, social networks, there's a lot of things going on there. First, first of all, like in Facebook, there are about uh, 600 million users. There's 45, uh, I think there are about 900 million uh, instant messages be being sent, not every day, but on a peak day. And uh, there are about 42 million pictures just going around. Now, a developer has to do that in real time, which means 42 million people are uploading or checking pictures instantly. And so, now, like I said before, there was a front end, you put all your stuff, it goes in the infrastructure, goes to the back end, comes back to you. They have to do this all instantaneously. Now, if you have a centralized location to store all your data, this is not going to work. Because 600 million people cannot store data in a centralized location and ex extract it uh, in real time. Also, because it's user-generated content on these sites, now, 
I don't know what you're going to put on Facebook. I don't know what you're going to put on Facebook. I don't know what you're going to put on Facebook. It's all customized. It's all different. So I have to do that um, all super fast. Now, uh, in computer science, what they do is they do, they do something called caching, which is if you go to a restaurant and you order lemon, sugar, or whatever, the waitress does not go into the walk-in cooler in the back to get that lemon. Usually, there's like a galley where they've already prepped the lemon and they grab it from there. That's what basically what caching is. Caching is saying that, okay, we know users do this. We assume they're going to do this over, over time, so we're not going to put the data in the central location. We're just going to put it in a temporary location so if they need it, they can access it. But the problem is, since it's user-generated content and you're the one putting it there, you can't assume, I can't assume what Bobson is going to put on his live feed on Facebook. So caching is not going to work because I can't prepare myself for what you're going to put. So uh, basically, developers have to go through uh, innovative ways to kind of save the data, extract the data, and make sure the data is uh, provided to people. And they do that by you know, having databases in several places. Uh, so basically, when you put an information into a social network, it's split into several snippets, several databases. And when you need that uh, information, uh, it's all created in real time and comes together. Uh, we're about to wrap up. Uh, we uh, will now we'll talk about the future of social networking. Uh, because we can't say with any certainty, we can only look at current trends that are happening currently. Uh, we all know that uh, social networking started with a personal computer, but it's currently become enormously mobile. Uh, currently, the mobile Facebook takes a pretty sophisticated phone to be able to update in real time, so it's currently perceived as a status symbol and it is also real time. It is fast, it's accurate. Uh, this leads itself to the future implications of uh, geo networking applications. Uh, this geo networking, for those that are not aware, it is sending real time, real time information about your location. Now, what they, what developers want to do with this is to uh, increase chance encounters with your friends or your other people that are on your social networks. Uh, the negative to this was the potential for, like, if you have a distant uh, colleague, they can now know your real-time location, which will increase potential for cyber-stalking. Uh, w when they can combine geolocation with uh, integration to other devices, this becomes really, really interesting because currently they think that in the future our TVs, our cars, even stuff like our grills will have applications in them that update their information. So let's say I fire up a grill on Friday evening. Uh, my friends will know that I've turned it on and will can't have a chance to invite themselves over before I'm done fin uh, cooking the meal. Uh, but the downside is, do we want to be that connected? Uh, Richard Fisher jokingly comments that uh, he, he goes through, I won't read it all, but he, uh, he, he's, he goes through an antisocial uh, tirade here talking about how he doesn't like his mom to look at his Facebook pictures as he updates them late at the night from the previous uh, bar outing. But there is a very, very big problem with this social networking is the potential for new avenues for identity theft or online fraud. Um, it's very serious. Users will have to uh, control the amount of information that they let out and will have to be responsible largely on their own end uh, about what kind of information you put out there and what kind of risks you put yourself in. Uh, it, this really has an effect to change our daily lives with the in, uh, increasing our social networking. A uh, recent study showed that social media has a direct effect on increasing the amount of group sports activities that adults under the age of 30 participate in. Uh, this uh, is leading itself to cultural norms are less about competition and more about uh, cooperation and collective activities. Um, one, one aspect that we will have to probably come to grips with that our different aspects of our lives, like our work, our social, and our family lives are beginning to merge into one online database. So. If you want to separate them, this becomes increasingly difficult if you want to express negative feelings about work whenever you have work employees on your friend list. And, and what we should notice is that currently is that global 
expansion hasn't quite happened yet with social media on a large scale. It is happening now and will be happening in like the next two, three years over vast expansion. There's a, this global competition is gonna pr produce um, fights between the large, larger companies uh, in social networking. Currently social net networking is handled on a national level and usually it's usually on a national semi-location level. So America will use Facebook and Asia will use something like Mixi or something, but um, we'll see about that. This, to wrap this up, social networking is probably the greatest communication tool that, that humanity has ever seen. It is fast, it is free, it is global. It is greatly in, uh, influential. We saw previously this year that Facebooking, that Facebook users in Egypt were able to communicate with each, with each other and produced a protest about s and civil unrest and other other uh, political movements so it was completely user generated and um, user connected so hopefully our global society will decide to do more than just play Farmville uh, any questions any comments questions I have one minute for questions. Chris, this is directed at you because you were so generous in providing, you know, all of us with an opportunity to upgrade our security on our laptops. <laughs> well, when, you know, Brian's talking about cyber stalking, what options is it going to be if it, the responsibility of security is going to be on the user end? What options are, are we going to have under those circumstances? See, the, the options, I see it as a, a two-tier approach. There's going to be uh, the site that has it. They're going to provide some options because the, the site with the best security options is obviously what everybody's going to go to. But as far as a user, honestly, a lot of it's common sense. Like, I don't know, I'm sure nobody in here does it because it's legal, but if you smoke marijuana, don't be taking a picture of you hitting off a bong like you're Michael Phelps and then go put it on Facebook. That's pretty dumb. You have to realize everything you put on Facebook has a potential to be out there. So if you don't want somebody else seeing you do something, then don't put it on there. It's like, I know people who puts on their status, oh yeah, I just got a big 50 inch TV and then the next day they're like, oh yeah, going out of town. Well, I know who I'm gonna rob. It's stuff like that, it's common sense. If, if you don't want people to know it or you think there's anything, even small things could happen, use common sense and don't put it out there. Because when it comes down to it, like security is, on our shoulders. Like the sites, they really don't need to give you great security. They will as a feature, but it comes down to us. It's our personal information we put out there. And if you don't want anybody to see it, then use common sense. If you have a question, if you ever have to think twice, then don't do it. It's simple as that really. Anybody, I mean, to me. anybody into psychology, is there anything in psychology of people? They look, like to expose themselves into other people to tell them, see how bad I am or something? I don't know. Any psychology major would help us in that. And uh, other questions? You spoke of uh, social networking. The question is, is, I know it's being debated right now, should the internet forget? Basically, as you talk about the infrastructure, the data that you in upload to the internet never disappears. Exactly. It's always somewhere. So the question is, is in, as younger people, in 10 years, are you going to want your children or your you know, whatever to find information out on you because you'll be able to data mine as we discussed and so forth. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. It's like, I see, you can go on the internet and you see people like, you see, say, girls putting pictures of self in bikinis. Okay, yeah, that's fun. You chalk it up to a college experience, but what, what happens if your kids find that when you have kids? Or you might think that's cool right now, or, oh, I was in Panama City, I'm in a bikini doing something stupid. Well, are you going to think it's still funny to put that up in 10 years? No, you're probably not, and that's a good example. Eh? People think in the moment instead of what's going on in the future. If your employer sees this, is it legal and ethical that your employer would try to see your Facebook to see what are you doing and so forth? Is it? Well, I, as I... I'm not sure about the legality. B may be able to help here, but as long as he doesn't like hack into your account, I wouldn't think it'd be illegal. But as far as ethical, I would say, I mean, I hate to say this, but if you're stupid enough to put something that could get you fired from work on the internet for everybody to see, then if their job's trying to protect their assets and their company, then. 
Well, I, I think, in my opinion, I think it's uh, unethical because it's your private, it's your private life, you know. So uh, yeah. So once you. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Unless, yeah. unless your job is rep like directly representing the company, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I see what I see what you're saying. It is your private life, and I mean, it's it's a gray area to me. I, w I would agree with him. I think it's not ethical, but again, you have to look at those companies. They want to hire somebody who uh, can fit. Uh, within the environment, they're not going to just take a drug addict or uh, an alcoholic. I mean, somebody like that, you know, like a. Exactly, uh, they want a professional. Know, so they want to. They want to hire a professional. Yes. <laughs> Another question. Any other questions? Yes. Private life. If we, I don't know how we can say it's our private information if we put it out there on a social network. I mean, already employers are looking at our Facebook pages to determine whether to employ us, and some of them even make us ask, you know, ask permission and say, "I want to go into your Facebook website, and if you don't let me do it, that may determine whether you're hired." So already in our college classes here, we've been told, you know, really be careful about what you put out there. I think you lose your privacy once it goes on a social network. You have none. You. I don't have my real name on Facebook. I don't have anything illegal or something that would get me fired. Well social, well, social networks actually need the data to be kind of public. They don't want it to be private because they actually need the data miners to mine the data. That's how they make their money. Except you're going to pay for your Facebook profile. Then don't expect security. So and the job is, uh, the, the, you know, it's left to you. It's actually a, the solution, the security solution is a social one. You as the user, don't put stuff that you won't put regularly, like, I mean, they, I, when I was doing my research, there was, there was this thing called uh, publicity paradox, where people who are so geared towards, like, oh, I'm, my privacy, my privacy, and the next day they'll put all their stuff on Facebook, like, they don't care about their privacy. So really, uh, as far, from a developer standpoint, he's not gonna secure his website. He's not gonna secure it, because if he secures it, that loses the allure of the website. You know, now, the live feed is so awesome when there's a lot of data there. Is there any rule that says if somebody gets a telephoto and take a photo of you inside your home, this is infringing your privacy. But if you are in the balcony or are in the street, it's public. I don't know. Legal. Now, any other questions? Lights up, please. Lights up. Now, would you let us take a, a group photo, please, and then... Give you a big hand. Group photo, group number two. Just a big smile. One, two, five. I'll take another one. I'll take another one here, just in case somebody was blinking or something. And then, thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, so um, our topic for our group discussion, group presentation with social networks, um, we're gonna cover a couple topics today. We're gonna start off with the history, we'll go into social network types, go into the technology behind social networking, and also the future of social networking. So I'll hand it over. Did you introduce yourselves? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm Chris Shuckhart. I'm Katie Glaze. I'm Brian Miller. Name's B. Adana. Okay, we're gonna talk about social networking and we're gonna start off with the history of social networking. Uh, I'm sure everybody in here uh, has used social network. If you think you've used social networking, just raise your hand. Okay, I'm gonna, that was kind of a rhetorical question. Everybody in here has, it's, there's so many different aspects that people don't really consider social networking, but are. Like, we're gonna start off with email. Some people don't consider uh, email as social networking but it is because you're still corresponding with other people, you're talking with other people and uh, so on. Go ahead and switch it. Uh, email, it was, the concept came up in 1971 at MIT and it was called Mailbox and you could send messages to other people but you could only have it on one computer. We c you couldn't send it to different computers. So uh, in 1972, Ray Tomlinson invented what the format we know as email today and that's when it could actually, networking got bigger and it could actually go to different computers. And this is uh, just the very first logo that uh, Ray came up with for 
uh, his email. Go ahead. And then I'm sure you got, remember, you got mail, the movie, and that stupid thing when you got mail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. All right, the next uh, we're going to talk about is uh, web browsers. And this has to do with social networking because web browsers, obviously, we all use them in here. And that's what makes pretty much the internet real easy to surf. And it, it opens up uh, for internet forums where people, buddy, knows what instant messaging is. You have AOL, the little da 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 da, and then however you say it, uh, MSN Messenger. Now even Facebook has Messenger. And uh, it was launched in the early 90s. AOL was one of the big pioneers of instant messaging. They're the uh, ones that saw how reliable and how useful it could be. So they're the ones who really started and uh, had their programmers working hard on it. And some people, I can't say this is a fact, but a lot of people that I read believe that uh, mobile messaging or texting, they got, they got that idea and wanted to implement it so bad because they saw everybody sitting there instant messaging with people. They're like, well, we can implement this on a mobile phone and make it popular and charge more money. So that's what they did, fortunately. And there's a little AOL guy, yellow AOL guy running across the screen. And this is one of the very first uh, templates I found for Instant Messenger. You can tell how it's changed from this, but it, that's one of the very first that they had that used to message on. And here's all the smiley face. I'm sure everybody had their friend on the list that always put a, some stupid smiley face and you just want to delete them, but you have all the smiley faces they love to use. And the modern social networks are big guys. MySpace, Facebook, obviously, they're kind of duking it out right now with Facebook kind of on top. Go ahead. Uh, these are so uh, big because so many people use them. They're kind of groundbreaking because before you had like, if you got a million users on a social network, it was, that was a huge thing. Now these guys have millions of users. You can customize your page like on MySpace, which kind of was their downfall. But uh, live chat on Facebook now, I'm sure you've been trying to, hey, when's this assignment due? You see your friend on Facebook, live chat. They add new features, whether it be Farmville, Mafia Wars, uh, chat, which Facebook did, all kinds of stuff like that. That was a big deal with <laughs> these guys. They, they add new content, and that's what keeps them fresh. And there's just a graphic. Uh, there was MySpace and Facebook duking out. Sorry about the picture. It's kind of hard to find two pale boxers fighting each other, so I just used the Rocky. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about are social networking types. I narrowed it down a little bit. Go and just talk about whatever their feelings or why their boss sucks or what have you. But this w these were first started in 1978, but they weren't really implemented or used because the internet was kind of on its first leg, so there wasn't a big need for them. But uh, they, like I said, they bring the information to the user. So instead of having to type in lines of codes or go out and it, all you have to do is double click. Everybody in here knows, hey, let's get on the internet. Let's double click. You're right on the internet. And like I said, the software makes surfing the internet so much easier. It, without that, it would be a lot tougher to navigate. Uh, the, the first web browser uh, architecture was from Mosaic. That's what pretty much other web browsers, they looked at that and uh, took their ideas and kind of implemented into theirs. Go ahead. And then there's a very first Internet Explorer that they had. I never really used it because we we're too poor and couldn't afford Internet. But uh, everybody, nobody really uses this one anymore. I just had to throw it in there for pity. But get old Netscape. All right, go ahead. Instant messaging. Uh, instant messaging. I'm sure everybody.